Researchers think they may have found a way to de-age the brain and potentially even reverse cognitive decline. That's pretty exciting, so let's learn more. Hi, I'm Lee Kelso. If we haven't met, I'm host of the Health Call Live radio hour, and I want to bounce right out to researcher Katrin Andreessen, a professor of neurology and neurological sciences at Stanford Medicine. The discoveries made in your lab, doctor. Exciting news. What's the, what's the big discovery that Stanford just announced, and what's it mean for reversing aging in the brain? Well, so with aging, uh, there's this very gradual but inexorable increase in bad inflammation, we call it uh, maladaptive inflammation. And um, this inflammation essentially can injure um, all the organs in our body and in particular the brain. And this inflammation is linked to cognitive decline in aging. And of course, um, uh, Alzheimer's disease, which is a, a major um, age-related uh, disease is very strongly related to uh, maladaptive inflammation. So um, in this study, we, we looked at uh, age-associated inflammation and what drives it um, and what the effects were of it on the brain. So I've read that your work is both with human cells in a Petri dish, but also using mice. Can you describe just exactly how that works and, and how you could tell that mice showed reversal in uh, cognitive decline and, and aging impact. That's pretty interesting. Well, thank you. Um, so uh, yes, it's really important to make sure whatever you find in experimental systems, and we use we look at aging mice as a model of aging, that the same things actually occur in people. Um, and so in this study, uh, we uh, modeled everything in our mice, which, which aged very beautifully <laughs> and developed cognitive decline. And we studied their immune cells. Uh, but at the same time, we also had access to our local uh, blood bank where um, donors uh, from uh, young age groups, so under 35 and older age groups, over 65, um, would be donating blood. And we were able to um, look at the blood cells in uh, their blood and, and compare young to aged um, immune cells. So we were able to look both at uh, aging mice where we could really um, look more carefully at the whole um, system and test for uh, cognitive function. And then we were also able to validate sort of the, the uh, nuts and bolts in cells from people, old and young people. You know, I suspect people are wondering, how do you know the cognitive status of a mouse? What, uh, what is the process that you can learn that? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we're very uh, lucky to have over the decades, and this is, um, you know, this, is, this work is on the shoulders of many, many studies coming before it where um, people actually have worked out very specific behaviors that mice uh, perform, for example, navigation and spatial memory that are very similar to what we do um, when we're trying to, you know, remember how to get um, somewhere uh, or where we parked our car, you know, things like that. So, so the trouble that we see in humans as, as they go through their Alzheimer's journey is kind of played out in mice as well. That's interesting. Yeah, on a much, much simpler uh, form, of course. It's, it's, and of course, everything ultimately needs to be validated and tested in people. Um, but before you get there, you have to actually uh, really understand what's going on. Um, and that's what we try to do here uh, in, our, in our aging models. Okay, so my understanding is that uh, there are certain immune cells that just kind of go crazy, go rogue and just start creating all kinds of inflammation chaos. And you found a, a way to block a hormone that stops that process? Yes, that's right. So the immune cells you're referring to are um, the, the part of the immune system that are the first responders. So these are 
what we call macrophages and monocytes uh, in the blood. And in the brain, they're called microglia. And these are very specialized first responder immune cells. They protect us from viruses and bacterial infections. And they also try to maintain a very um, uh, a nice environment uh, for all the organs uh, to function in. And so with aging, uh, what we found was that that set of cells uh, changed quite dramatically from young to old and became what we call very pro-inflammatory. So they made lots of factors, um, uh, immune factors or inflammatory factors that disrupted brain function. And the hormone uh, that we uh, identified is a very famous, uh, at least in scientific circles, a very famous um, um, a regulator of inflammation called prostaglandin E2 or PGE2 affectionately called. <laughs> and this hormone is uh, flowing in through the blood and it's actually made by these um, immune cells and its production increases with age. So this was a very surprising um, finding. We didn't uh, really know this, but uh, this hormone, which promotes uh, bad inflammation, increases in the blood and in the brain with age. And then it sort of drives this pathway uh, on these uh, immune cells um, that is, is very, very deleterious. So uh, very early in your research, you're just at primary stages. Uh, take a look out five, 10 years, whatever you think that time horizon is going to be, what's the most optimistic application of what you've learned in the lab? Oh, well, there are a few things. Um, I think, uh, well, uh, an, uh, the ultimate application, of course, would be to have some sort of uh, therapy uh, that could target this pathway. Uh, that would be um, a very nice thing to pursue. Um, and to test uh, if it actually uh, does the same thing in humans that we see in aging mice. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is more of a conceptual um, novelty, which is that we found that the energy states of these immune cells is actually critical for their function. And the energy state uh, changes dramatically from young to old in the sense that these immune cells kind of become energy depleted. They just have no, no oomph anymore and they don't work very well. And that's what contributes to this very maladaptive, you know, age associated inflammation. So um, what we're really excited about is that if we can understand why these cells um, the energetics of these cells changes, maybe we can we can intervene there as well. Well, that is very interesting. And boy, anything that can help us win the battle against Alzheimer's and dementia. I mean, all of us with thinning gray hair care a lot about that these days. So yeah. I'm very sensitive to that. Hey, I appreciate your time. And I hope that we'll be in touch again as your research moves forward. Well, thank you very much. You bet. That is uh, Katrin Andreessen, Professor of Neurology and Neurological Sciences at Stanford Medicine. We hope we'll see you again. Thank you so much.